Hey everyone, it's Stasia from KnitAndCrochetEverAfter.com. Today we are making the cobweb shawl. So this is a fun and easy project for anybody that wants to get ready for Halloween. We're using kind of a bulky, furry type yarn. So any kind of fuzzy, furry yarn you have in your stash would work well for this. You can see the yarn that I used in the pattern um, if you download the pattern in the link below. Otherwise, you know, if you have fun fur left in your stash from years ago when it was popular or any other boucle or anything that's just kind of fuzzy and, you know, easy to work with, grab it. We're going to be using a nine millimeter hook, but you can definitely use a different size if depending on what kind of yarn you're using. But download that pattern. You can see all the different ways you can wear it here, but download that pattern in the link below and we will get started. Okay, so to start off this pattern, we are going to put a slip knot on our hook. So just have your tail in one hand and turn down, reach through that loop and grab the yarn that's attached to the ball and pull that through and just pull it tight. Then you're going to slip your hook on, grab your working yarn, drop your tail and pull that so it's on the hook. Um, just leave your tail long enough to weave in. No big deal. So the first thing that we have to do is chain 221 chains. So this is going to be the unfun part, but the rest of this pattern is super simple, very um, customizable. So I'm not gonna talk too much because this yarn being a little bit darker, um, I need to pay attention to what I am counting. You can still, you know, if you kind of push on it, You'll see the loops, so you can see the loops um, if you get lost and you need, you know, if you're doing it and you lose count, you can see, you know, if you kind of just let it go. If you're pulling it tight, it's hard to tell, but if you let it go, you'll see the loops where you're at. I also recommend using some stitch markers, so you can add stitch markers every 10, 20 stitches. Just put it in there and then... That way, if you lose count, you can go back to your last stitch marker, however many you have, and you can start from there. So again, we need to do 221. And then we're gonna come back and start our first row. So I will see you in just a second. Okay, I've got my 221 chains. Um, don't worry if you're one behind or one above or off by 10. This is a really forgiving pattern. Um, it doesn't really matter, you know, if you're a couple off at the beginning. But um, there are stitches given just to, so that you get kind of the right look that you see in the picture. So as long as you're following it pretty closely, you'll be fine. So the first row what we're going to do is we're going to turn and we're going to begin in the second chain from our hook so we can kind of push and see where all of our loops are coming from. Don't count the loop on your hook, that's your working loop. So here's one and two and I'm just going to go into the back loop. I'm going to make this nice and easy on me. I'm not going to try to go in the bottom bump or anything because you're not really going to be able to see these stitches being that this is like a darker yarn and the stitches we're doing, it's not really important to have stitch definition, but we're gonna go ahead and slip stitch in these 12 stitches. So we're gonna have a lot of slip stitching, some single crocheting. It's gonna be just a plethora of different things to do. So we're gonna um, insert our hook so you can kind of see it just poofs up so we can see where those holes are. Insert our hook, lay over our yarn, pull that through, and then pull through the loop on your hook. You can slip stitch really tight, or you know it's possible to, but you don't want to. So it, I'm warning against slip stitching tight just so that it's not um, gonna curl up a bunch. So when you're slip stitching, pull it, don't pull on your tail, just kind of pull it through. Make sure that you're kind of pulling this out so it's um, a little extended before you pull through and that will give you a nice loose slip stitch that will line up with your chain. If you pull too tight, so if I did this one real tight and I get it, it's going to be like half the size, it's going to come all the way over here and it's going to start to curl your work. So if you want it without curls, if you really want curls, go ahead and do it tight. But um, without curls, just kind of make sure that you're pulling this loop over here up before you pull through, and that will give you a nice loose slip stitch. So we're doing 12, one, two, three, four. 
and then five, six. To start this pattern off, we are going to just single crochet the rest of the stitches. So that is a whole lot of single crocheting. No, so I'm not even counting these. Um, if I do 13, that's fine. If I do 11, it's fine. It's not a big deal. Don't worry about the numbers. Just get as close as you can. And then I'm probably around 12 now. And then we're going to single crochet in every stitch after. Again, just go into the back loop. You can see the holes when you're working against a light background. If it's dark and you've got some dark yarn, um, go into the light or put it against a light background. I did this with an even bigger hook than it asked for so I would have nice big stitches that I could work into and I could see easily. And it makes it nice and drapey so it looks more like a cobweb. So just start doing lots and lots of single crochets. Just enter your hook in, lay over your yarn, pull up your loop, yarn over again and point down to get through those loops nice and easy. So I will meet up with you at the end of this um, row and then I'll tell you what the next row instructions are if you want to follow them exactly. Okay, so we did tons and tons of single crochets. I don't even have room for all the single crochets to show you, but we're going to go ahead and start row two and what we're doing at the beginning is just turning and we're going to start slip stitching. So I'm going to work into the top two loops of each of my stitches and we're going to do those nice um, loose slip stitches again. So I'm going into that very first one. I'm not doing any chains because I don't need any height. I just want it to lay flat. So why are we doing slip stitches and single crochets? The slip stitches um, is just a different height stitch. So that way there's a little bit more interest, you know, in the cobweb shawl rather than just doing thick single crochets. I like the thin on some sections and thicker on others so that's just what I did. If you want to do single crochets instead go for it or where there's single crochets if you want to slip stitch totally up to you. It's really easy to kind of personalize this or change it around or do different stitches. Once you get like just kind of the basic of what stitches you're doing you know like where you're putting your holes and stuff then you can do whatever you want with it. So we're doing 26 slip stitches. Again, I'm pulling it out so they're not super tight. So I'm kind of pulling that out and then pulling through. Makes it easier to get through too rather than having a really tight slip stitch. So once I get to 26, then we're going to have a um, kind of repeat where we're creating the holes for the cobweb. So um, I'm not, you can see that I'm not really looking when I'm inserting my hook. There's quite a big hole. That big hook helps to create big holes in your work so it's easy. Oh, um, I already did one in that hole, but it's easy to see where to place your hook. So once you get used to it, it's not so difficult. So I'm going to do 26 and then I'll come back and we'll do that. Repeat. Okay, I just finished start. the 26 slip stitches. Now I'm going to create three holes and I'm going to do that by chaining 40. And then I'm going to skip 40 stitches. So I need to, um, even if you don't skip 40 exactly, you'll still be fine. It's just um, that's, I'm keeping the stitches as even as I can, you know, if I was actually counting my stitches. So that's just something that you can do if you want to try to keep it, ex you know, exactly how the pattern states. Otherwise, don't worry about it. You know, try to get 40 if it's hard for you to see your stitches. If you're not used to counting stitches, it's not a huge deal. You can kind of just even lay this flat. So this has four. You could lay it flat and go, okay, that's about four. And then you're going to slip stitch two stitches after that. So I'm going to chain 40 and then I'll um, count 40 and I'll come back and show you how we're going to reattach this. Okay, I've got the 40 chains and the 40, sti 40 stitches. I basically just laid it down. I am doing this kind of eyeballing it. I didn't count the 40 stitches. I just laid it flat. I tightened both rows. They were laying flat against each other, like hanging. I just kind of held it up and let them fall. And then I'm just going to eyeball it and join there. So I'm going to join with a slip stitch. So just go into those top two loops again, the closest one to where I thought it was 
about 40 stitches because this is not you know anything that you need to get super technical about and then I'm going to do one more slip stitch for good measure just to make sure that I have a good little join in between each of my holes so I'm going to do that three more times so you'll see the pattern says repeat four times and then at the very end I'm going to chain 27 so I'll come back right at the end so I can remind you to chain 27 but in the meantime you're just going to chain 40 skip 40 stitches and then slip stitch two stitches to join that hole. Okay, I finished my four holes and now I'm at the end of the row so you can see I have a little bit left over so I'm just going to chain 27 and that's going to create like a tail for the cobweb shawl. It's not going to be attached to the end of this at all, it's just going to be its own little free hanging tail that we'll crochet into on the next row. So do 27 chains and then we'll come back and start row three. All right, I got my 27 chains. So one thing that you want to just make sure of when you go working back into these, that when you get over here, that you're working on the top side of the row that we just finished. So don't accidentally go backwards and end up in this, stuck in this ditch, you're, and then start you know working towards the end and run out of, all of a sudden you've finished and you've barely done any stitches. You need to make sure that you're keeping it the same, the right side up, since it's kind of very flimsy and movable, you wanna make sure you're working on this, the right side. So for row three, we're doing some more slip stitches. So we're turning, we're beginning in the second chain from our hook, we're skipping that first one again, and we are going to slip stitch just 12 stitches. So we're gonna do one, two, three. Okay, there's number 12. And then all of this stuff, I don't even have all of it in the picture, that's like half of it. We are single crocheting. So we're gonna single crochet all the way across all those stitches we just made from the last um, row to 20, what, what are we ending at? We're ending to the last 24 stitches. So I'm trying to find the end of this thing. So down here, I suggest that you count out 24 stitches now. It'll just be easier. So just count backwards 24, stick a stitch marker in there or another piece of yarn. That way you can just not have to think about it. Just keep crocheting, single crochets until you hit that 24th stitch and then you're going to chain 25. So we're going to create another little hanging off tail to our cobweb shawl. But in the meantime, you've got some single crochets to do. So every single chain, work into that back loop and do a single crochet, just like we did on the foundation chain. Um, when you get over to these joins, you'll do two into those. So just basic single crochet. So we'll meet up at the end um, where those 24 stitches are and we'll um, I'll remind you to do the chains. Okay, I finished doing all those single crochets and you can see that I put in a st stitch marker, 24 stitches from the end. So now I am going, oh, let me finish this single crochet. Now I'm gonna chain 25. So this will be another little tendril of the cobweb, and then we'll start row four right after our chain 25. Okay, got my chain 25 done, and now we're gonna kind of do the same thing as row two, it's just we're gonna do a little bit more slip stitches than we did at the beginning. So this time we're gonna slip stitch 32, so we'll do all 24 of these because we're gonna skip one of the chains, and then go a little bit into our single crochets of the row before, and then we're gonna do that chain 40, skip 40, slip stitch two, four times again. So we're gonna create some more holes in our shawl by doing those chain 40s again. So again, if you wanna not count, you can just kinda hold it up and see where 40 ends and slip stitch two to join but you're gonna do that four times. So since we've already done it, I won't come back to kind of speed things along. So just slip stitch 32. Then we're gonna do the chain 40, skip 40, slip stitch two. 
And then we'll come back at the very end because we're going to do some more chains to make another little tendril. Um, it's going to be 17, but I'll come back right at the end to remind you. So keep on going. Okay, Oops. I finished okay. all of my new holes. And now I am ready to do just the last chain. So we're doing chain 17. So just like normal that we've been doing. And then we'll come back for row five. Okay, I've done my 17 chains. So row five, it's kind of like row three where we're gonna turn and we're gonna slip stitch. We're only slip stitching six stitches. So we skip that very first chain and we slip stitch into the next six. Again, just do the back loop. Don't worry about making it all super pretty because with these big stitches, it's hard to see the stitch definition. So three, four, five, and six. And then we're doing single crochets again. So we're gonna go single crochet all the way across again to the last 32 stitches. So again, I'm going to use my stitch marker, and I just have to find the end. Try to keep it all together. Here we go. And then I can tell the difference because one is thicker than the other, so I know which one is the end one. And then I'm going to count, and you can see my chain, so I know that this is the top. And then I have my chain here. So I'm going to count back 32 stitches and stick my chain my stitch marker in there so I can just single crochet over and over without having to stop every once in a while to see how many far, you know, how far away I am from the end. And then we'll do some chains again once we finish um, all those single crochets. So just single crochet to 32 stitches before the end and, and then we'll meet up the again. Last single crochet to do and you can see I've hit my stitch marker. So now I'm going to chain 33. So we're making another little tendril off of our cobweb so we're doing 33 chains and then we'll be done with this row and we'll be able to go on to row six so come back after 33 and we'll join up okay got 33 done and just like the row before this you know not this previous row but two rows before row four we're going to do some slip stitches and then we're going to do that chain 40 skip 40 again four times so this time we're going to um, slip stitch 24 stitches. So again, skip that first one. Start slip stitching in your next one. And we're going to do that 24 times. And then we're going to do our chain 40, skip 40, slip stitch two times. Do that four times again. And then we'll come back and do some um, chains. Okay, we've got end. our so new holes. So you can kind of see better now how these are looking got the camera in a little bit better angle to see because it's so big um, now we finished all of the chain 40 so now we're at the end of the row where we just need to do some more chains and we're gonna do chain 25 and then we're gonna turn and do some more single crochets so do your chain 25 and then we'll come back for row okay, seven 25 chains now we're ready for row seven again we are going to slip stitch a few stitches. We're going to do 16 slip stitches. And then we're going to single crochet all the way across again to the last 24 stitches. So just like we've been doing, nothing new. Um, mark your 24 stitches if you want like I do. And we'll meet up at the end of the row for some last bits of chains. All right, I'm at my last 24 stitches, so that means I'm gonna chain 25. So just like we've been doing, chain 25, we'll come back for row eight, where we will do some more holy holes for our shawl. Okay, okay, 25 chains made. So for row eight, we're gonna slip stitch 22 stitches, just like we've been doing, skip that first one and start slip stitching. And then we're going to do our chain 40, skip 40, slip stitch two, four more times again. So you'll see that every time we do this, our holes are offset. So each set of holes is not lined up because of these different amount of slip stitches that we're doing. So just in case you're wondering why they're all different, that's why. So go ahead and slip stitch 22. 
then chain 40, skip 40, slip stitch two, and then we'll come back at the end to do our final chains for the row. Okay, finished all of our chain 40s. Now we're back at the end of row eight, so we're just gonna chain 21 and then move on to row nine where we'll be doing more single crochets, yay! So hit 21 and come on okay, back. Okay, got our 21 chains. Now we're gonna slip stitch 12 and then we're gonna single crochet up all the way across to the last 20 stitches. So place your stitch marker 20 stitches to the end and start single crocheting after these 12 slip stitches and then we'll meet up for those final chains at the end. Okay, I just have a couple more single crochets left, but I'm getting low on yarn and since I know that I'm going to be doing chains and um, slip stitches, I don't want to risk running out, so I'm going to change to a new ball of yarn right now so that I make sure that I don't have to frog everything that I've just done. So I'm just going to do um, a regular you know, yarn change where I'm going to pull up a loop, so I'm down to the last step of my single crochet, and then I'm going to lay over the new yarn, and I'm going to pull that through to begin crocheting with the new yarn. And these two ends, I'm going then I'm to just gonna continue it. with my new tail. And you'll see it pulls out quite a bit. Don't worry, you can tighten that back down again. Once you start working and doing a couple of your single crochets, it will help lock that in. So you can kind of just pull on it and it will tighten everything back down. And then we are ready for some more chains. So we are going to chain 21 so we can start um, row 10. So go ahead and do 21 chains and then we'll get going with some more holes. Okay, I got my 21 chains. Time to start slip stitching again. So we're gonna slip stitch 28 stitches and then do our chain 40, skip 40, slip stitch two, four times just like every other row. So go ahead and do those slip stitches and your 40s and then we'll meet back up at the end of the row for our final chains. All right, got our four 40s and now we're ready for our chain. So we're gonna chain 11. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and eleven. So then we can start row eel row eleven, <laughs> and we're going to slip stitch just ten chains or ten stitches, ten either way. It works for both, and then single crochet across to the last twenty stick, twenty sticks, twenty six stitches. So place that stitch marker, start slipping and single crocheting, and we will meet up at the end of row 11. Okay, we are now at the end of row 11, and we're just gonna chain 27, and we're almost done. We only have four more rows after this. You can, of course, quit whenever you want. Like, if it's big enough now for you, you can stop, or if you have yarn left over, depending on what kind of yarn you're using, you can even add more rows. So an easy way to do that is maybe just start the whole shawl over or just copy a couple of the other rows so that you already have kind of the offset holes so you don't have to figure out the math on those. But that's also a, a yes. you know, something that you can do. Okay, got my so 27 chains. And just like all of our other rows, you know, we're gonna turn and slip stitch. So we're going to slip stitch 24 stitches and then we are going to start with our chain 40s again. So just like all the other rows, chain 40, skip 40, slip stitch two, four times. So get going and we'll meet back up at the end of the row. All right, we are back at the end of row 13 and we're going to chain... Oh, what are we gonna do? No, we're not. I'm kidding. We're at the end of row 12. We're gonna chain 15. So once we do this chain 15, we only have three more rows to go. So a single crochet row, a chain 40 row, and then our last single crochet row. So let me see how many I got. One, two, three, four, five, 
6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 12, 13, 14, and 15. So now for row 13, we are going to slip stitch 12, and then we're going to single crochet all the way across to the last 22 stitches. So again, slip stitch 12, and then single crochet to the last 22 stitches, and then we'll do some chains when we get over there. All right, we're at the end usual. of row 13, and we just need to chain 23. And then we only have two more rows left where we'll just do some more holes and single crochets. Okay, now we're ready for row 14. We're going to slip stitch 18 stitches this time and then do our 40, 40, and 2. So chain 40, skip 40, slip stitch 2. How many times? Four times just like all of the rest of the rows and then we'll be almost done all right we're on the last chain before the last row and we're going to be chaining 19. six seven oops eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen fourteen fifteen sixteen seventeen eighteen and nineteen now we're on our last row so we're going to just slip stitch eight and then we're going to single crochet all the way across to the last 18 stitches and then we're gonna do something special at the end just so we don't have like a little chain hanging off so I'll explain that when we get there but in the meantime slip stitch eight and then single crochet to the last um, eight yeah, the last 18 stitches. And then we'll come back. Okay, we are at the very last little bit, and I'm going to chain 18, and then I'm not going to end there because I don't want this skimpy little chain as one of the tendrils. I don't know what you want to call the little legs on it, um, but I want it to look as thick as the rest of them. So, let me see how many I have. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, and I mean 19, sorry, 18, 19, because I'm going to turn and I'm going to slip stitch 18. So you do 19 chains, and then you're going to slip stitch back 18 chains, so that way we don't have the skinny chain for the last bit of the last row. So once we finish that, you can see I still have quite a bit of yarn left. Like I could probably do um, at least four, six, maybe even eight more rows. Well, not eight because I'm already halfway. I'm going to say four maybe at the most. Um, so I could add more if I wanted it to be even bigger. So that would be up to you if you're using the same yarn or anything with similar yardage, um, but you can end right here. Once we finish these 18 slip stitches, then we're gonna fasten off and weave in our ends. So we should have four ends. Maybe you have less or more depending on the yardage on the yarn that you're using. Um, but we are there. So what I'm gonna do to fasten off is I'm actually gonna do one more slip stitch over here just to kind of finish it off right in the ditch here from the um, row before so you can see the two where the where the stitch marker is and then I'm gonna yarn over and pull a chain and get my scissors and I just pull like a really long chain to cut my fasten off then I pull that working yarn out and I tighten that down and then I'm just going to take that out weave in my ends and then we'll take a look at the finished show okay you can see the finished shawl here you saw it at the beginning too um, it's difficult to look at you know just in a pile so it looks better when it's actually being draped but you can see that you can wear this so many different ways. It's super easy. You can customize it however you like. 
you know, it is a very user-friendly project. So if you have any questions, leave them below. And thank you for watching.